Joining us on According to Metal this episode, I'm about to fanboy out here, I'm not going to lie, because this is one of my favorite bands, and if you're an According to Metal head, and you listen to the Best of 2016 episode, you know that this also happens to be the band that had the best damn album in 2016, as far as I'm concerned, and that is, of course, DGM with The Passage, album of the year, and the mastermind, the guy who writes most of the music, and one of my favorite guitar players out there is uh, joining us on According to Metal. I can't believe it. This is Simone Mulroney. Simone from DGM is here. I swear, Simone. Welcome to According to Metal. Hey, Jason. How are you doing? Very, very good. Now, like I was saying a little bit ago, every album I've heard of yours has kind of raised the bar, and it's simply mm-hmm. better than the last one I've heard. And The Passage, to me, was by far and away the best album you've done, and other reviews are kind of sharing that same feedback of going, these guys have done an incredible job. And what's interesting, if you really think about it, is that's kind of rare. Sometimes a band will come out with an album, it's incredible, and then they got to try to match as good as they did before, and a lot of bands fall short. Every single album that I've heard of yours has gotten better and better and better. That's what I feel. That's what a lot of reviewers and a lot of the metal community feel. But what does the band feel about it? Do When you were writing it and when you were done with the finished product, do you walk away from it going, man, this is the best stuff we've ever done? Um Actually, that's that's my main goal. I mean, my target when I start when I start writing every album, you know, because basically I try to uh, I'm I'm talking singular because I'm the main you know songwriter of the band. So um, uh, usually I just I just listen back to the album, you know, after one year, two year that you're listening back to your previous album, you kind of learn you know all the mistakes and errors and what 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 is going what is cool play live and what's not so i think i think it's um, as you said my main goal is 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 to make every album <clears throat> it's it's hard to to say better you know because i i think they're all different all the albums i made with the gm i mean the sound is always the same but the, the band sound but you know an album can be more as I like to say open and airy like the last one probably more melodic uh, the previous one was more like in your face uh, double, a lot of double bass and stuff and I we try to our main goal is yeah to raise the bar and and to to get better in uh, in the aspect that we think it, they were not 100% in the previous album. I don't know if if this this is clear enough, but you know, it's 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 not it's not easy because uh, because after album after album, you a lot of bands start to losing you know inspiration and that kind of stuff. But I, I we feel comfortable and. You know, we basically in the end we basically like to write good songs, you know. We we really like the hang, the catchy the catchy melodies then and we really I'm really super autocritic, so it can take forever for a song to to be okay, you know. Sometimes sometimes it's one night, I can start writing a song and then it's finished and some other times I start a song and then it lasts like two months, you know, to finish it until I'm satisfied with it. So I don't know. I don't know. But actually, we we don't have the the objective perspective of of the of what the community says, you know, in as soon as we finish the album, because we only know we only know that is a good album, you know, because we we we, we won't never put out an album that we're not satisfied 100%, but we're so happy with this one because everyone seems to, you know, to everyone seemed to enjoy it and all the reviews were amazing and the response. Let's hope the sales will be good too. <laughs> yeah, no, and it, it, it definitely is something that, that every time I listen to it, I just appreciate it more and more and even certain songs that stood out right away or songs mm-hmm. that uh, are still great but songs that kind of fell under the radar for me or maybe not as good as some of the others become now my favorites as I listen to it. And you're talking about different sounds and, and, and you're exactly right. I mean, I guess let me share with you how I discovered DGM in the first place. Mm-hmm. So 2007, I'm on 
I, I'm on Amazon. I actually bought Paradise Lost from Symphony X. Uh-huh. And but if you bought stuff on Amazon, I'm sure you have. You know, you're like, hey, people who've oh, bought people who've bought this album buy these and um, <laughs> uh, uh, different shapes. It was probably was me. It was probably me. Yeah, <laughs> maybe it was. <laughs> <laughs> but it says different shapes by DGM, and I'm like, you know, I've heard these guys before. Click on it. There's some good reviews of it, so I actually picked it up. And I remember listening to the Alliance uh, for the first time, the second track on the album, which was great. And the song Frontiers has a lays a really good hook to it as well. And I really started to kind of love and appreciate your band. And then when you came, when you followed that up with Frame. Within the first 30 seconds of hearing Hereafter, um, I, I obviously the vocals were different, and I'm going, man, this doesn't sound like the same guy, and clearly it's not. And Mark Basile, to me, has been has become one of my top five favorite metal singers, and I'm not exaggerating just because we're talking to you. He has an incredibly great sound, very unique, and I just absolutely love the way he sings. Um, kind of take me through how he became a part of the band because, uh, you know, it, it just seems like with every album he's been a part of, it ju- he just, just seems to get better and better. How did you, how did you guys connect and how did he become part of the fold? Actually, it was <clears throat> when, when we parted ways with, T- with Tita, the previous singer. And actually, I, I, I gotta give him the credit because he was the one to call me in the band, firstly, uh, the previous singer. But then, <clears throat> Then he, he he didn't want to you know he was in the band already for like ten years with the previous lineup right and they were they weren't going anywhere actually but it was not because of the music it was more because of uh, you know they did they just played music for fun you know it, there was not this this focusing one hundred percent of the band like now so that's probably the reason and then he left after different shapes. And uh, actually, I called my good friend. I don't know if you, you if you know him, Marcos Foglie is the guitar player of James Labrie. And, oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. He's my good friend from oh, Naples. Wow. And uh, I called him, you know, because we were friends since forever. And I told him, I asked him, "Hey, do you know some guy from Italy that can sing my stuff?" <laughs> And it was, hey, my neighbor is Marco Basile. Never heard of him. And I was, no, absolutely. So Marco sent us, you know, we sent him like three songs without voc- vocals. Then he recorded a tome. And it was the first one. Then we, we did like 40 more auditions of oh, other people, you know, like 40 people. And uh, then we came back to Marco because he was the better, the best one. So <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was the... <laughs> The initial, you know, uh, the initial hook. But then about the albums and about, I agree with you that he's getting better and better singing and singing wise because he's a vocal teacher and he he, he constantly studies, uh, you know, technique and uh, he's, he's way better now on stage too, you know. Um, and on the albums, you know, in the beginning it was more me writing also melodies, you know, in frame. Uh, I mean, we always wrote together songs, um, vocal-wise, I mean, the vocal side of the songs. But, you know, in the beginning, I was more, uh, yay, I want to be the the leader, you know. Right. <laughs> so I want to write everything, and you have to follow my my rules and stuff. But then after, we're playing together since almost 10 years now, and then we know each other like super you know uh, so now for the last album especially we sat down together and he, he sings me he sings me his his ideas uh, on my songs and i think 95% are of the vocals of this album is his stuff so now i think he's sounding better mainly because he is singing he is singing what he's writing what he wrote you know you know right. what i mean while in the beginning, everyone else in the band was trying to, you know, I remember Frame a lot of, we recorded vocals with all the bands, in all the band in the studio, all the band members. So it's not that easy for a singer to have, you know, the drummer that says, hey, do like that. And the bass player, hey, do like this. While the last album was more me and him, and we were really focused on recording and stuff. And and as the songwriting, we always try a different approach, you know. This time we double some lines in the chorus that we never did before, like like technical things, you know. Because right. I'm produ- I'm producing a recording, blah blah blah. So 
and different microphones and stuff. But the main reason is because mainly because we we know each other now, like from since ten years, and we played a lot of shows together. And he knows what I like, and I know very well what he likes to sing. So. I think the the combination is getting better for this reason, basically. Of course, we're hanging out with Simonia Mulroney from DGM here on the According to Metal podcast. Yeah, and speaking of Frame, um, and, and speaking of Hereafter for that matter, that of yeah. course opens the album. And recently you re-recorded at least the guitar solo portion uh, of uh, Hereafter by Place Vendome, who uh, yeah, Michael uh, Kiska yeah. sings a DGM song. It was a uh, pretty... <laughs> Pretty incredible to me to be able to hear that, and to be honest, I do prefer the DGM version. But yeah, a lot uh, of people, a lot of people do actually. But, <laughs> but how did you, how did you get in, involved in that project? Because I know you also wrote a couple other songs, I believe, yeah, or, or contributed because, to to that project here. How did yeah, how'd you get involved since, with that? Since I since we signed to with Frontiers, you know the the label, right? And they're producing uh, the the Place Vandom album. They they want me to to be involved in many other projects as oh, cool. a songwriter sometimes i mixed a few albums for them and some and i already wrote you know uh, three songs for for an artist four songs for another one you know and, and it's funny because because it's i mainly do you know like studio job every day uh, since like 15 years oh, with wow. all the bands i produce and i was starting to feel a little bit uh, I mean, not tired because I, I love it, but, you know, it's always the same routine. While uh, I never wrote songs for for someone else except DGM, so it's really funny because you have to write songs in the style of, I don't know, I did this Soundstorm album last year with Jolie Turner. It was my, like, yeah, when I was a kid, I it was my hero, you know, it was singing with Malmsteen and Blackmore and all my, my heroes. So I wrote five songs song for him and I wrote four songs for Yorlande on his upcoming solo album and wow. it's really it's cool because because you you can experiment other styles that I lo- I really love like 80 80s hard rock kind of kind of stuff so but I cannot play that music with DGM because no. we have our own, <laughs> but that's have the, our own that's style. perfect for Yorn you know I mean that's yeah, that's exactly yeah, yeah, that yeah, of course, of course. And then, I mean, speaking about hereafter, it was Serafino, the is the the main uh, the leader of of uh, Frontiers, and he's he really when he called me when when he signed DGM, he told me in the on the phone, hey, hereafter is the best song I've ever heard in twenty years. Wow! Uh, and I was, hey, thank you. So when when he did the new Place Vandom album, he, he asked me if I could like rearrange the song more in a hard rock way. And I told him, "Hey, are you sure? Because it's uh, it's there's a lot of like odd time senior tours, and it's not typical. No, you know, I don't know how, Yeah, that that and would be very. Me, and he told me, "Hey, I don't care. It, it has it has the best chorus refrain, you know, in, in the world. So people will love it. So I mean, for me, it's it's kind of an honor, you know, because uh, a, a great voice of metal is singing my song, so it's cool. And then, but of course." Of course, I mean, the original one was kind of, I mean, it's always difficult with the covers, I think, because unless you change them, like, like you know, a lot of people remade, uh, like, um, like classic 80s song, but then they played them in a metal way or rock way. And then it's, then it's cool. Okay. In my opinion, at least. But if you do a cover of a metal song and you, and you and you do it like pretty much the same, it's difficult, you know. Yeah, when, that's when you true. Compare. So people people will probably love the original more. That's my two cents on it. I no, I, it, like I said, I think it's well done, but I, I do prefer the original to it. But uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. you can always when you add a little metal to a song that normally doesn't have metal. To your point, when you're doing a remake of you know Yorn, for example, with Hard Rock Radio that he just came out with recently, where you know you're adding a kind of hard rock and metal you know edge to you know songs like you know Live to Win and uh, uh, you know a lot of more rock classics. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, adding a little metal to it never hurts. I don't disagree. But yeah. to your point, you 
you write some incredible songs, and you're obviously starting to write some songs for you know, different artists and different, uh, uh, you know, even types of genres of music. But you guys have quite uh, the catalog yourselves as a band. But if if you had f- 